Hello, everybody. My name is Jochen Böser from uh, um, Robert Bosch Power Tools. I'm the project lead of what we call the Agile Transformation, and I'm hosted together today with Tamir Klippenberg. This is my name. I am an Agile master. This is a combination of a Scrum master and Agile coach in um, Power Tools, in Bosch Power Tools, in a huge business unit. This business unit is called um, Blue industrialized market. So we produce really the huge and the big uh, power tools for the construction, for uh, example, for the craftsmen. And I'm there working as an um, HI master for the board members, but also for different um, platform teams and also for the sales teams. Yeah, and, and Carmel and me, we are very happy to, to host you today for the session, what we call Objectives and Key Results, OKRs at Bosch Power Tools. And we want to share our experience with you being on this journey. Um, and yeah, let's start. Um, we have prepared um, a little agenda. So we want to guide you through uh, what is Bosch Power Tools, um, then highlight what is our agile transformation in a nutshell, so they get the perspective how we came to the OKRs. Then OKRs, uh, it's important to understand why we started it, the purpose behind, what is it, how do we do it, and what's the scaling aspect of it at Power Tools. And then openly have a closing session about success stories and challenges, and that can be then directly integrated with questions you might have. So feel free to answer any we will answer as honestly as we can today. So it's not only about shining, but also about sharing our, our struggles, but of successes along the journey. So to give you a bit perspective, Robert Bosch, I think is a well-known name. The Power Tools division is a consumer goods division of the Bosch Power of, of Bosch uh, Corporation. Um, Bosch overall has around 400,000 people and 70 plus billion euros. We are 20 people, a division which is quite big. We are a consumer goods division of, of Bosch. We have around 5 billion euros in sales. Um, and as you can see, we sell over 50 million products each year. So these are really the power tools, um, um, tools that you use to mainly do construction sites or DIY projects. So this is just to give you a bit perspective who you're talking to in terms of company, organization, and size. Then on the next slide, um, I think for us, it's important that you get a bit of a feeling uh, why uh, we decided also that Carmen and myself do this session together with you, to together, um, because we started five years ago, a project called Agile Transformation, where we actually answered a lot of questions and said, what does this really mean for us, right? Um, and you can really nail it on the three questions that we asked at the beginning and we still constantly ask ourselves is, are we close enough to our user, meaning zero distance to the user? And user for us is so much different than a customer because a user is really the guy, girl who's using our tools. Um, traditionally, we have been selling our tools a lot via retail, which means um, um, like Amazon or OB Bauhaus, King Fisher. But you also, what we are targeting with the Agile transformation, really to be closer to the people who use our tools. Then the fast and flexible. Um, I mean, being an innovative consumer goods company within a bigger Bosch brand, I think we really wanted to be fast and flexible. And the speed and rate of innovation that is expected from us needs to ask us really, how do we all balance that out and really have fast innovations in the market? And what you see on the right hand side and as a screenshot is that we changed substantially. And that's also where we said uh, OKRs might be something interesting is we really um, diverted or disintegrated our business units from functional orientation, meaning a marketing department, engineering department, manufacturing into smaller business teams, right? You see here the puts, the, the purpose teams, which are cross-functional. For example, in the, in the setup of BI, which is one of our major business units, um, and 60, 70% of our people that were formally aligned according to functional departments, they are now joined into cross-functional business teams, purpose teams, who are really end-to-end -end responsible for driving sales, revenue, EBITs, and bring out the greatest innovations in their field. Um, they are supported uh, by expertise teams, that they provide services to the business teams. Um, they are 
much less in terms of number of associates than previously, but they have a really, and also needed to change their perspective in terms of be providing a lot of service and a very lean governance to bring the whole purpose teams, business teams forward. Um, on the right-hand side, you see also an indication, one, two, three, that we substantially reduced hierarchy as well, because we said to be fast and flexible, we need much less hierarchy in the organization. So hierarchy for us is really layers in terms of people reporting to other people. We need much less of that. And that's why we reduced also hierarchy is a big cultural change for us. So you see, we have created really 18, uh, in this case, in BI business units, 18 um, business teams with end-to-end -end responsibility supported by expertise teams and sales teams in the countries with reduced hierarchy levels within to keep on working in a fast and flexible way. On the next slide, um, I think you, we also hand over then, I think, to, to Carmen. Perhaps you can give a bit of background on why do we, why is, why is our OKRs really helpful for us? Yes. Thank you very much, Jochen. I would like to go back uh, one moment for, to the uh, last slide you already mentioned. So what you see here, especially here on the right side, when you look at this, then you see, okay, this is really a very, um, a, a, a lot of pieces which has had to work together. And this was really a challenge for us because we were, were, were not used to it in former days before we started our transformation. And that led us to, the, um, to think about how we could collaborate together in a good way, in a transparent way and in a most efficient way. And this led us um, to the decision that we implemented the flight levels like you know maybe from Klaus Leopold. Klaus Leopold supported us and we have um, meanwhile really the three flight levels implemented in our organization, but not exactly according to the mode model, which is presented by um, Klaus Leopold. It's a bit more, we adapted it to our needs and to our situation. And uh, this was uh, then the case that we uh, have seen in the, on the uh, highest level, flight level three, that we, uh, what we are doing, it's a, it was a kind or is a kind of our portfolio about all our products, projects we uh, have to work on with a certain um, contribution connection to the strategy, but really, as I said, with a certain uh, connection. And this was uh, then uh, two years before we thought about, okay, this is not really clear enough for us. And this leads me now to the purpose. Why did we then think about to um, implement also the OKR method? I would say as an um, additional factor or as an additional method to the already implemented flight levels. And the purpose was we, um, we really would like to uh, start with this one, a clear articulation of our goals and request results, because this was not so clear. It was pretty good. We were, we were in a good way, but not so clear. It was not crystal clear. And this is the purpose, the why we implemented um, objectives and key results. We would like to foster and demand also communication. This was really good done and well done uh, on the, uh, with the flight level method, but um, also not sufficient for us. So we thought, okay, this is also another method which could help us to be better. We enforced on uh, focusing on our main topics. This is something we are not really good in, and I think a lot of uh, companies are not good in to really focus on uh, main topics to prioritize. And this is also something because when you think about the OPR method, the basis is the strategy, and coming from the strategy, you have to focus and you can, and it is easier to focus and to prioritize. This is exactly the next one, with, which I already mentioned. So really focusing on our strategy. And then we, uh, what we also um, learned and what we also implemented is a regular reassessment of our uh, objectives and key results. And then for sure stretch the objectives and the key results. To be very honest, at the moment, we do not um, stretch a lot of our uh, objectives and key results because we are just in a learning phase. I told you before, I think it's two years ago that we implemented it. And yes, I repeat, it is really a kind of um, a first uh, steps. So it takes time and this is also crucial. Nevertheless, which method you implement and which uh, things you change according to an agile or also digital uh, transformation, 
take care that this takes uh, time. You have to um, bring in the same boat huge members or a huge number of employees and all of them have to go with you. That's the reason, one of the reasons why it takes time. And last but not least, we also strive for, and we do it um, we are not also not at the end for fast decisions because uh, this also would help us in our um, in our work in our daily business uh, really to to be really fast. If you remember, Jochen told us, are we truly fast and flexible? So I would say yes, we are faster if we compare it to the past, but we are so far not fast enough. So there is also room for improvement. And all those um, why topics, so those purposes, led us to um, implement the OKR method. And uh, what did we do, or also did, 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 what and how? So we, um, the basis is our strategy. You see it here on the left uh, hand side. And uh, it is not only just this um, nice picture. There is a really um, good paper behind. I really like it. It's um, approximately 19 pages, but it is really worth to go through it, to read it, because then you understand it, you have a, a good uh, level of detail, detailed information. And coming from that, from this strategy, we define our company objectives. Uh, and then we also have strategic KPIs. As you know, we are a part of Bosch, of Robert Bosch. This is really a huge, huge company. Um, and here we get uh, KPIs and we cannot get rid of it. We cannot say, no, we don't. Uh, in the future, we don't take care of KPIs. So we said, okay, this is a part, but really only a part of um, defining our company key results. So you see here, we have the company objectives where we, which are the basis for the key results, but also the strategic KPIs go in it. And this is uh, on this level, it is the so-called BI level. I repeat, it's the business industrialized level, our business unit. And the owner of this are our board members. So it is the senior management who is responsible for this uh, objectives and key results. And also for the reassessment, as I already said, and for the stretching of the objectives and key results. And um, this part, which is defined now as an OKR on the I level, um, is given down to the next level. And you remember this was also presented by Jochen our purpose teams, this 18 purpose teams, the expertise teams, and also for sure the sales teams, they uh, also define their next level. It's here also called the flight level uh, two objectives, their key results, and then their epics. And this is so far what we implemented. We did not implement it if, uh, to the next uh, level. So to the team level, let me call it like this, because we are just on a learning path, we would like to be really pretty good at those two levels, and then we would like to bring it to the next level. And here you see also again, it is also um, concerning to that what I already mentioned about the flight level, Klaus Leopold, and you find uh, a picture very similar to this in the um, book Rethinking Agility. And last but not least, what I would like to uh, tell you is how did we do it? And because this is reality, what I show you here, um, I had to have to present it, not in a way that you can read it, go through it, but here on the left hand, uh, you find our objectives. And then you find on this one, our um, on this column, our yearly key results. You find some um, people who are responsible for it, especially the senior manager. You remember the owners, I'm here on the PI level, on the highest level, on the business unit level. These are the board members, and um, we here uh, added some additional information we need. And then you'll find the quarterly key results. We defined quarterly key results, and here you see we make a monthly check of our company key results. And it is during the BI activity board. This is our flight level three board. Um, if you remember what uh, Klaus Leopold's model um, tells us. And uh, during this, we, we, all, we have regular meetings there. And during one of those meetings every month, we talk about the uh, very successful key results and those which are not so successful, but not in order to make a finger pointing. First of all, to make it transparent and clear for the whole organization. And the second thing on, on the second um, point is that we can have the chance to act and react and also to give a support 
to um, maybe to those teams or people or to those um, business owners who uh, struggle with their key results. And uh, this is what I already uh, mentioned here. And the start of it is uh, was in May, so in the, uh, this month in 2021. This is also something new. We did it. We didn't do it in the past. In the past, we only did the second uh, part. We um, started every new quarter. We went through the quarterly key results from the last quarter, and uh, we checked the status there. And um, we also and and we presented also the, the the quarterly key results for the upcoming quarter, so that everybody, especially the leadership team, this is approximately forty people, are really aware what is going on on this highest on our BI level and what is what does this mean for my level. They also had the chance and they used the chance to ask questions, to bring in their input, to uh, bring in also changes, recommendations we should um, take care of in our strategy. And there's one point I would like to put it out. So we, again, we, um, it is based on our strategy, the objectives, also the key results. And last year we had uh, the same um, tool, we, we used it in the same way. And then we got during a discussion, during such a quarterly uh, discussion, the feedback from one of our business owners that the strategy is fine, it is fine, but it is not sufficient. It will not survive on the market according to this strategy point. And this was really great because then we got really this information from the basic, from the expert who knows what is going on on the market. And we were able, and we did it, we adapted our strategy. This does not mean that the whole strategy was stupid and we uh, got rid of it. No, it was just a part of it and we made it clearer and more detailed and we adapted it according to what are the market demands. And remember again, this is again coming back to that, what Jochen uh, told us already, are we really, or do we have really zero user distance? If in this case, do we have really zero distance to the market? And this is where we, where we can, uh, can grow and go on. And the last word to that, what I would like to uh, tell you, yeah, you see, this is just a um, stupid Excel. I agree to that. Why did we or why do we use a stupid Excel? Because at the moment we are in our um, organizational unit, we um, check and evaluate some, um, I think, good OPR tools, and we are nearly on the, the last decision. And as soon as this OPR tool is available, we will just switch it to the OPR tool. And my very last comment to that is, and all of them, the Excel and also maybe this uh, high sophisticated tool. These are just tools. Important is that the method is understood in the organization, that it is lived, that it, it is accepted, and that it is improved step by step. So far, according to the OPR, what we implemented here, and there are for sure, we are not at the end, that's what I also said, it's we have a um, lot of next steps, and this is the point where I would like to hand over back to Jochen. Yeah, I mean, um, as, as next steps, and there are two, two questions already in the chat, so we, we I, I suggest we run through the last two slides and then we open up for the question and we'll answer the ones that are in the chat first, if, you, if you're okay with that. Um, so next steps, um, I mean, you heard now, heard now uh, in detail what Carl mentioned about OKRs at one of our major business units, but um, I think what is important to, to know that we are six business units, not all of the size SBI, but uh, also other that are similar size. And we have sent central functions who are also one or two already started into that direction. And we're really interested now in scaling that up to the whole PT organization. Um, I think what is important to know once you want to scale it up is also find the right balance between sharing the transparency and building the bridge between search and execution because transparency on itself is very helpful but it can also overwhelm the organization. So we really need to make sure that we do it in a, in a coordinated way. And then last but not least, you see on the right-hand side, uh, these five bubbles of leadership, collaboration, organization, process methods, and strategy. These are our five bubbles from the agile transformation. And I think in terms of the OKRs, it's really important for us that we do not start it as a separate initiative to say now the next wave is coming and we call it OKRs, but to really 
integrated in, into our story that we're telling since five years that everything is connected. Um, and I think there the OKR is really a good level to help us connect, especially how the new organization is working together according to the strategy and with the kind of methods. And it helps also to define a new way of leadership or supports a new way of leadership because it's so much more of bottom up as well as it's top down. So I think um, the strategic KPIs and OKRs are really the next step for us in, in bringing our power tools division more agile. And I think it's really good that a very important business unit like BI has started on that journey already. And we have all the, some other examples in the organization that we can learn from and then scale it up to have a whole holistic fit to the power tools division OKR. Yeah. And then on the last slide, uh, next slide, sorry. I think we just put down what we could talk of, what we want to provide you with. And that's now a, a share slide from, from Carmen and myself. And I mean, you see on the left-hand side, really some success stories where we are very uh, proud of. And on the right-hand side, some things that really slow us down still. Um, and I think this, uh, this leadership is very convinced. I think Carmen, this is just a really a very good example from your BI organization, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this is, and this is, uh, in my opinion, to be very honest, this is one of the most important factors. Uh, if the leadership is not convinced, you uh, can start wherever you would like to, to do. You, will not, you are not able to move forward. And you need really to convince also the leadership that they have to be aware that they get a feedback, what the job got, that the strategy is not sufficient or not, not really crystal clear, or, or maybe there's something really missing. And that they mm -hmm. then are willing to adapt it. And this is really very important. And also what we learned, especially my leadership now, that the strategy has to be cut into small pieces. I told you about these 19 pages. And for my uh, management, it was really very difficult to prioritize these some things. Everything was important and everything we have to do in 2020. And we have to, to uh, we cannot um, go out of that or go out of that. And they learned by themselves. It was too much. And I always told them they have to learn by themselves. Meanwhile, we really reduced our um, the topics we take care of in 2021 into uh, smaller pieces and into some parts of the strategy and not into the whole part. And this is really a learning, especially from the leadership and for sure also then from the other uh, people who implement the uh, such a method. It's not only valid for OKRs, it's valid for all the methods. Yeah, I mean, by the time probably you have already read through the last points here that we wanted to highlight, we have seven minutes to go. I would suggest we, we jump to the slide, uh, to the questions that are already out there. There was one question from, uh, um, sorry, it's from, from Harry uh, uh, from, from the Netherlands. Could you describe your teams with team topological terminology? Um, I think you, you referenced to slide four, where we showed the purpose teams. These are our Minty enterprises. They are in a way stream aligned teams because they serve a specific user needs. For example, there's a business team called fixing. So all tools that do something to fix on the wall or wherever you want are really end to end responsible for that. And then we have, I would not call them platform teams, but expertise teams, but similar because they provide services. So in one business unit, you have both of those things in common. Um, then there's a question from Harun. Can you share the OKR tool you use, please? Um, I think at the moment you see that uh, Carmen is using still a lot of Excel. We are investigating different tools at the moment, but it's not finally decided. So uh, stay tuned and reach out to us in a couple of months, then we can openly share it with you. But it's one of the well-known companies that are out there at the moment. Mm -hmm. And then I think from Dylan, there might be a good question for you, Carmen, to say, can you have too many levels of OKRs, meaning organization goal, then alliance OKR, then tribe OKR, then spot OKR. Yeah, that would be good. To, to I would know. say immediately, yes. And that is also one of the uh, reasons why we just um, said we have two levels of this OKR method. Uh, we implemented it into two levels. And to be very honest, in my opinion, but I cannot um, prove it, but it's my opinion and let's say my experience, I would say that's enough. We, I would not recommend at the moment to go into a uh, deeper detail because we have, if we, sorry, if we would go down here um, um, to the next step from the purpose area and the expertise areas, 
they are really the teams which are developing the product, which are uh, responsible for innovation and so on. And in my opinion, that it, it does not make any sense that they also define their own OCRs. In my opinion, they should really, like it is shown here, should pick up the ethics or maybe also the user stories. We are not so clear at this uh, point, in, but we, we survive with it. Um, they should just pick it up and then bring those topics down to their really task. That's what I would recommend. So, because at the end, I would agree to that if we implement it in every level, then at the end, nobody knows what he or she really has to do. And so far, I can tell you something. We got a lot of feedback, especially from the employees, from the teams, team uh, members, that they know now better, not perfect, but better what their contribution is at, at the end to the strategy. So they got it better only uh, by implementation, in implementation the uh, OPRs on those two levels. Mm. So my opinion, this is <laughs> at least for the first five years, I would say enough. Very good. We have a couple more minutes, uh, so feel free to to answer some questions in the chat or speak up openly, whatever you prefer. Um, I've got a question. How? Mm -hmm. um, how hello thank you for the talk um it's helpful um i'm curious to know how strict you were about whether all work should fit under one of these okrs so um uh we've experienced that sometimes you know so you try and make it broad enough that everything will fit into it so that everything mm -hmm. seems like it's aligned but then mm -hmm. it can be so broad that it becomes less smart and measurable etc or you can have the opposite approach and then some people's work doesn't fit. So how, how did you approach that challenge? To be very honest, at the moment, we are really pretty broad. So we are not very strict, especially not on this um, level of the purpose and the expertise areas, because that's what, what you already said is the case that they have to do some work, which is really necessary. But what we started now is to, to ask really this question, is this really a very important and necessary task or work you have to do isn't it something you like because you did it always when you started to work and it is something i like and it's nice to have and this is really the i would say this is now at the moment the challenge and also maybe at the end the success story we are in to define really very clearly is there really anything which has to be done which does not have at the end at least an indirect uh, contribution to the strategy and this discussion already started and so far, I don't really have an answer to that. What we said, we said on this level, we allow that they have, let me call it so, um, a kind of further objectives and key results, which does not fit at the end exactly to the strategy. Thank you. Learning. And this is really also something to be very honest, I would uh, recommend. If you are too strict, also if you say, no, the objective must be motivating and inspiring and blah, blah, whatever. And the key result must be exactly defined how to measure it. Then the organization um, does not like it, and, and they they are not able to uh, to to implement it perfectly from the first step on. And this is also something you have to to lead them or to to, to give them the chance to learn by themselves. If they um, define key results which are not really good measurable, and then they see after a quarter, oh, I should say. Did I fulfill it? And did I fulfill it 50% or 90 or 100? I cannot do it. Oh, next key results, I have to define clearer. And this is the learning and much better instead of telling them to, to do it and to push it. Just let them learn and let them learn step by step. Thank you. You're welcome. So we have one minute left. Uh, feel free to ask another question. Uh, Carmen and myself will also go to the Velo room uh, in in case you want to ask us an uh, immediate question or feel free to reach out to us via the known channels uh, if you have some additional questions feel free okay then i also would like to say thank you very much to the audience i did not have the chance to look into your faces but i hope it was interesting for you thanks a lot to jochen um yeah 
that we could manage it again together. And thank you yeah. for, uh, to Saba for the great support of this year. Yeah, thanks a lot, Saba.